Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Furlong, and today we're talking natural selection. Natural selection is the mechanism that helps to explain how evolution works. This theory was first brought forth by Charles Darwin and Alfred Wallace. Of course, you probably have only heard of Darwin. Darwin did many of his observations on the Galapagos Islands, which is a set of islands off the coast of South America in the Pacific Island along the equator where Darwin made observations about the tortoises on the island, uh, the different types of finches on the island, that all help him came to his conclusion about natural selection. So let's take a little bit of time and look at what this is saying. We know that natural selection acts on phenotypic variations in populations, not on individuals. So an individual cannot evolve, but a population can. Couple of examples. A couple of examples of phenotypic variations are the peppered moths in England, where based on their genetics, they come in two different colors. There's a dark variety and a light colored variety. But you can also have lots of different types of variations. For instance, these ladybugs, they're all the same species, yet they look very different from one another. A lot of variation in that particular population. So a couple definitions. Genetic variation describes the genetic and phenotypic differences between individuals in a population. Now remember, the genotypic differences are differences in the DNA. Phenotypic differences are what we see in these pictures, how they look different from one another. Individuals with more favorable variations may have a greater chance at surviving and then having a chance of reproducing and then passing those same favorable traits on to their offspring. In essence, that's what natural selection is saying. There are three causes of phenotypic variation. The first one is genetic. So based on the genotype, individuals have specific phenotypes. So a particular gene codes for a particular trait. It could be environmental, where the environment changes the phenotype. So in this example, we see the Arctic hare in the summer versus the winter, and the color of the fur changes based on the temperature. And sometimes it's both, genetic and environmental. When we talk about natural selection, we're going to talk about various types of selective pressures. So a selective pressure are external agents which affect an organism's ability to survive in a given environment. So what is it that is either allowing that individual to survive or what is it that might be causing that individual to not have a great of a chance at surviving? Now these can be things like how much food is available, the type of food that's available, disease, are they resistant to that disease, or will they succumb to that disease, uh, the climate, how much water, what's the temperature, uh, predation, are there natural predators around? All these things can be selective pressures and they can either be positive which means that that could actually increase a phenotype. So that would be beneficial to the species, or it could be negative selection pressure, which means that they're being selected against, which would decrease their specific phenotype. So let's take a look at an example of this, one we've looked at before, and these are the peppered moths. There was a time when the beech trees in England had lighter colored bark. Usually you found the lighter colored moths, the darker ones, they would stick out on the bark and would get eaten by birds. But then the Industrial Revolution came and due to pollution caused the tree barks to get a little bit darker. Now what we saw was a change in the allele frequencies. The darker colored moths were more common than the lighter colored ones. And then fast forward to the 1970s, the air started getting cleaner because they started cleaning up the pollution and now the tree barks were getting lighter in color and guess what? The lighter colored moths they're now more common than the darker ones. An example of a negative selection would be, for instance, the polar bears. So the polar bears walk around on the Arctic ice looking for seals. That is their main source of food. There's plenty of calories in seals, but as the earth is warming, especially in places like the Arctic, the ice is melting faster. And so the source of food for the polar bears is decreasing. And more and more polar bears are dying from this. If there's no ice, 
They're not going to be able to get as much food, and they are literally starving to death. This is an example of a negative selection. They are unable to survive in this new climate. 